the New Britain Board of Education, providing students with a high quality education. I'd like to call this uh, meeting to order. And uh, let's start with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. And, uh, Diana? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can you call the roll? Mr. Merrill Gay. Here. Mr. Nicholas Mercier. Here. Dr. Violet Jimenez-Sim. Here. Ms. Monica Dawkins. Here. Mr. Anthony Kane. Here. Mr. Joseph Listro. Here. Ms. Annie Parker. Here. Ms. Diana Reyes. Here. Ms. Gail Sanders Connolly. Here. Ms. Tina Santana. Here. Okay. Um, now take a moment of meditation. Okay. <coughs> and Kristen, do we have anybody in the meet for public participation? I didn't see anyone. Don't see anybody? No. Okay. All right. Um, let's move into new business. Do you want to make a motion to move this? Do item B first or how do we? Um, I'd like to move that we go into executive session for item 2B, discussion of a personal matter, as we have the attorney here for that matter. Uh, that would be with the board, I believe Miss Manning, Superintendent Sarah, and, um, pardon me, I've forgotten the attorney's uh, name. Mr. Kevin, you want to thank you for Okay, Kevin. Thank you. Yeah. Second. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. For, we need to take this Hold on. For two <laughs> We're doing, for the personal matter, is that Kevin Peter Murphy. Peter, Peter Murphy. Murphy. I apologize for not speaking oh. loudly enough. We're, we're going to 2B first since you're both here in the person. Uh, attorney Murphy and Attorney Wesley. Wesley. So this is going into executive uh, session to discuss item 2B with those two attorneys, Ms. Manning, Superintendent Sarah, and the board. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Thanks. so we are back in session. Yeah. Um, motion to go back into executive session for a different matter of business to do, uh, discuss ratification of Local 871, uh, the contract between the Board of Education and Local 871, the New Britain Federation of Teachers. Uh, that'll be the full board, Mr. Kane, Ms. Manning, uh, Superintendent Sarah, and Attorney Roy will be joining us remotely. Mm -hmm. Um, did we want Mr. Foran as well? Yeah. And Mr. Foran. Okay. We have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so we are back in session. It is uh, 8.02. 7.02. 7.02. Sorry, I never sat back that much. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Still sitting in the drawers when I grabbed oh. it this morning. Um, all right, so our next item is a special recognition. Uh, motion. Oh, yes, right. Yes, uh, a motion Mo to. Motion to approve the contract between Local 871, the New Britain Federation of Teachers, and the Consolidated School District of New Britain Board of Education um, for the period starting. Sorry, I need to pull up the actual dates. Uh, starting July 1st, June 2022, and ending June 30th, 2025. Second. Okay, we have a second in motion. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I'll abstain. You'll abstain, okay. So nine to one. 
Motion carries. Our next item is uh, recognition of two of our board members who, uh, this is their last meeting. Um, Don't smile behind them. <laughs> <laughs> Still trying to tell me what to do. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to check her after. <laughs> so uh, Nick and Violet have been uh, key players on this board as coach as chairs of committees and uh, um, Violet uh, has been on for four years and uh, Nick for eight years uh, during that time he's also served as chair um, and uh, I have to say I'll miss you uh, for uh, being there to correct me when I uh, you know, <laughs> forget to do things on the agenda and uh, providing guidance on uh, parliamentary procedure. Um, so it's really been a pleasure to serve with both of you um, and have both of you in the, the leadership team and officers of the, the board. Um, and uh, now I will uh, pass <laughs> this go around. Everyone gets to speak. Anybody who would like to, anybody else would like to say a few That's words? Exactly. I'm okay, yeah. Yep, so Nick and I, we've had some good ones. Right? <laughs> we've had some good ones over the last six years, but... You know, I appreciate your guidance a lot, right? Um, your leadership, just amazing. I'm going to miss you because, you know, I'm probably going to text you over the next two years, like, you know, can I really vote on this? Um, I really appreciate it. Like, I appreciate you. And, I mean, we've had our, we've definitely had our battles. They've been good ones. Um, Violet, same. Like, I don't think we've ever had a battle, but, I, you know, on hot topics or sensitive topics, you've always been able to, give me an honest opinion, right? Gail, you're, you're, you're wrong, or you're right, or this is probably how you should handle it. I've always appreciated that with you, and I'm gonna miss you. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. I'm taking my mask off. <laughs> <laughs> I, and, uh, um, I, I think I speak on behalf of the cabinet. Uh, Nick, you've been with me, and we were here before I even, even came on, and Violet, you came on just a little bit after um, I started my, my tenure as superintendent. And um, I think as a superintendent, this was, a, it was a, it's a dream board, right? Because it was truly one voice. Um, you know, it, it, it wasn't political. It has not been. And I think as a superintendent, I've appreciated that, that we truly, truly have put students first. Um, from policy changes to um, just the movement in five years, uh, and and I and you know we, we, we had to recover from some tough from tough days, right? Um, and I can't thank you enough to uh, for building a foundation, a very strong foundation for future generations, for our current students, our current teachers, and future generations. Um, I, and I think. For, for those remaining and the news that are coming on, we need to honor that and know um, what's best for, for our children. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's, I'll say it a hundred times, we need to model, right? We can have, we can have um, open disagreement, that's fine, uh, if it's always in the name of children, um, and agree to disagree at times, but always keep our eyes focused. So I can't thank you enough because you've really been, in terms of teaching me and my cabinet, um, I think back to no subcommittees to subcommittees, um, right? You know, even today is an example of taking things off the agenda because it didn't go through a subcommittee. But, but this board built that structure, and that's huge. So mm -hmm. thank you on behalf of cabinet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> that was a I would just like to echo that. Um, I learned so much from both of you, and you're going to be your knowledge is going to be sorely missed. Mm -hmm. I told her I was going to text her during the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll say something. Uh, I've been for <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm worried. <laughs> and he's like, let me break oh, this up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just keeping it straight and honest, it's been wonderful until we didn't agree. But as <laughs> long as I can have my say and you say what you have to say, I can go on from there and I understand strong opinions because I can have strong opinions. So speak your truth and uh, I'm sorry to see you also. 
Hopefully we've gotten rid of our issue with dress code. <laughs> That's all I have to say is print one. <laughs> And I would just like to say, as one of the newer members, that I, will, I certainly appreciated your um, guidance and your warmth and your willingness to share insight to kind of help guide me as a newbie, and you will be missed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I'll just echo pretty much everyone here in saying that um, I've only been on the board for a year, but I truly learned a whole lot from both of you. Um, and I look forward to continuing to um, learn from you and um, carry the work you've done in the past few years forward. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> soon, as soon as the last election when I came on the board happened, you know, COVID hit a few months later, right as we were getting ready to delve into, you know, board retreats and you know, team building, and of course, you know, a lot of that, everything just got pushed to the side because we had a pandemic on our hands, but, um, I mean, eight years is a long time, and uh, the policies, like, <laughs> the policy overhaul is nothing short of amazing. Um, so, thank you for that work. I mean, that was like, truly yeoman's work, go back to the 70s. And, <laughs> mm -hmm. Take care of stuff. Yeah. Just, you know, <laughs> I told you were yeah, yeah. Sitting around and cleaning those up. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, I wasn't, you know, on your committee for a while, and so I can't speak to your you know, work. But thank you for your service as well. Yes, I think uh, boards going forward will um, benefit from your uh, mm -hmm. inst reinstitution or instituting subcommittees. Um, that uh, only a few of us have been, were on the board when we used to meet until 10 o'clock and, and, and then have the motion to extend the meeting past 10 o'clock. Um, and that was the norm for meetings. Uh, so some of you don't know how lucky you are that uh, Nick pushed for that. So. All right. Anybody else want to say anything? Yeah, Nick, we'll let you talk. <laughs> I was going to do it now or during the board report, so. Um, I just want to say that the past eight years have been remar a remarkable experience. Um, I truly believe that public service, holding elected office, volunteering your time for a board of education for any organization is the one of the ways we can give back to our community. Um, and when I got involved in politics, I was very worried about some of the partisanship that tends to happen. Uh, you know, New Britain has a bit of a reputation when it comes to politics. I've heard it described as the Beirut of politics, <laughs> right? It's, it's rough. And you know, through just happenstance, we ended up at one point having a 5-5 board, and I think that helped push us towards a more bar bipartisan place. Um, but I have valued the relationships that I've had with my fellow board members over the years, those currently serving and those who have moved on to other things no longer serving. Uh, we've had disagreements, <laughs> but I, I still respect those people, even the ones I've disagreed with on issues. And we, we can fight and we can fight hard on things that we, we believe in. That's what we should do. But I don't think that this board, especially in the past five, six years, has been partisan. Our, our divisions on issues have been anything but with weird lines <laughs> sometimes showing up. Um, and I think the board has generally kept what's in the best interest of students at heart. And I hope and I pray that going forward, the board continues to do that because this is not always the norm. I work with teachers and you know teachers from around the state, from around the country 
some of the stories I hear of things that happen at boards of education. Like, Windsor. I will not speak to that. <laughs> but other places too. Other places too. Like, there are deeply divisive, politically motivated boards. And we've taken on some really big challenges in my time on the board. Putting in committees and making the meetings more efficient. I'm glad we were able to do that. Changing the way we do our policies so that we can actually find them. I'm glad that we do that. Um, but the board's also been willing in a bipartisan effort to take on challenging things. Going after the city for special education money, money that should have been coming to the Board of Ed all along. That was not a partisan issue for the board. Republicans and Democrats both said, no, we need to do what's right for our children. Putting out to bid a contract that had not gone out to bid for transportation in decades. Decades. And, you know, through an audit and review, we found out it was costing the district millions of dollars it didn't need to. That was not a political issue. It definitely had political blowback, and members of both parties felt pressure to cave and give a contract to someone who was not the low bidder. End of the day. We had to stick to our guns. We had to take that to court. And the board, Republican and Democrat together, supported it because it was the right thing to do. Uh, and if we keep that as our guide star, doing the right thing to do for the district, doing the right thing to do for children, I think the board will continue to go far. And I hope that this board continues to advocate for our students, and I hope this board continues to advocate, advocate for more funding from the city. I've advocated for that since before being on the board through three prior administrations. It's not a political issue. It's about what's right. I will miss my time here. I have learned so much from professional colleagues, from the teachers, the administrators, fellow board members, people who have opened my eyes to perspectives and viewpoints I'd never considered. It has made me a better person. It has made me a better board member. It's made me a better teacher. And if we can continue to do that, it will make this city a better city. Thank you. It has been my pleasure to serve. Um, you know, I have absolutely learned about, um, you know, procedures and definitely came in um, not knowing how the board would be because um, I think, as Nick said, the board was not always as cohesive as it was. And I know there were rumors floating around and I was thought to be this person that was going to come in and cause all the chaos or whatever um and i obviously don't need to be on the board to cause any chaos <laughs> what i'm trying to do so um you know that i think that very quickly we all found out got to know each other and found out that we were all here for the right reasons and so yeah it, it's been my pleasure to um to be able to have uh you know discussions when we disagree, you know, we know that this is a board. We operate as a body together. Everyone has a voice. You then have a vote, and what happened happened. That is what the board decided um, as a body. And um, because of that, we have been able to do so many things that, as I as I always bug Nancy and call her up, and she knows this is the one thing that I constantly scold about is. Um, so many things that don't even make it to the public eye, right? We're, we're making 
constant progress and doing um, good things for kids. And that that has been a result of the collaboration of this body and mm -hmm. you know not of any single person. Um, and I think it's you know it's awesome when we start to know um, everybody here has a niche. Everybody here has right like a perspective that we're really tight about. And when you start seeing like when something comes to you know me to committee, I'm going. I understand the justification here. Now talk to me about the money because when you go to Gail, I already know she's going to ask you this, this, and this. Right? Let's, let's, let's do it. Or when Gail will jump into something and say, "Oh, the policy, but how about we change that she he to there, right?" Because mm -hmm. we're we're doing that, and when we all kind of started adopting each other's lenses for the better mm -hmm. um, of of the whole body. So, you know, it's been my pleasure to uh, advocate mm -hmm. for all of New Britain's kids, mm -hmm. including my treasures that are still in this district. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll miss it, but I'm I'm glad to have had my time. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, let's move on. Now? Yeah, all right. Let's move on to the superintendent's report. Oh, me. Yeah. Sorry. You that's, are the superintendent. At least still. Um, I'm gonna actually. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be brief. Kevin Dion's gonna be brief because you're just gonna. Can you just come up and just give a quick synopsis of this weekend and what the weekend brought as far as cameras goes? Camera goes. Kevin King, you might as well stand now and start walking up to talk just for a quick minute on the update on school construction projects. Well, he's, go ahead. Sure. So, so this weekend we began the camera conversion over at the high school that was approved uh, last month. Um, well over 100 cameras were replaced and have been are up and running currently. Uh, we hope to have the rest completed by the end of next week. Uh, we did exteriors today, but all critical cameras, cameras that are mostly used during our school days and have the most student activity were identified the prior week, and those were we made sure that those were included in the 100 that were done over the weekend. I'm um, happy to say that the system has been up and running. Uh, we had no issues today. We've actually used it a couple of times uh, for some questions on where people were in the building and everybody's happy about it. Uh, I think the principal's comment was, wow, this is wonderful. So I wish he was here, but I'm sure he can pipe in at the moment and let us know. But it was, it's great, it's a great system. And actually I'm gonna be talking later uh, about another school that has completely failed uh, that we need to do next. So I'll speak to that. And just a shout out to our crew for being in on over the weekend. Our security team, they, they came in, they were they were uh, onboarded over the weekend. And they yeah, we had security well. with us. We had training that occurred. We wanted to make sure that Monday, as soon as school started, that, every, that the people that used the cameras that sat in front of them the most understood how to use them. So we had actually training yesterday as well. So we did a lot of the planning. It was worked out great. I was hoping you are going to demo them. I know. I, I got a clip over the weekend. It was pretty cool. Um, I just want to also, and again, you'll see it's long. I gave you an update from each department, but I just wanted to highlight and lift off a few things. Um, I thought it would be time, um, and we'll do it again, I think, next month. Kevin at Finance, because we have new board members coming on. I'd like to keep them updated as far as the, the closing out of the capital project. So if you can give a brief okay. overview. And then. For members to recall, back in September 2019, two years ago, we, got, we discovered we had 13 um, school construction projects that were still open from years back. You this list, you, um, part of Superintendent's report, there's a list of all the open projects out there. There's four. I'm not sure this is on. It doesn't work. No, okay. There's 14 projects on this list. Forget the last one. So there's 13 projects we originally are working with. You'll see that 11 of those projects, uh, one looks like it's closed, it's final. I'm not so there should be a payment. The other 10 are audit in progress, which means they're sitting at the state and the state is auditing. And so there's a hold back money, 5% or whatever, it should be coming back eventually. There's two projects out there that um, right now have blanks, so we're looking into that as to where those stand. Um, that's one is the admin building, the other one is the Alternative Behavior Center. 
when we brought construction advocacy in, uh, they worked with Ray Moore to close these projects. They're, they're alleging that these two projects were handled by Ray. I don't know if they were or not. So they're actually contacting the state to see where they stand in those two open projects. Was there anything filed with them? If not, we'll be working on those. You'll see at the bottom, Smalley project, that was for Mr. Moore and Newfield were working on that project. It was our understanding it was closed. It's not closed right now. So what happens, these are estimated payments. So all these projects have estimated payments. So something, something's missing there. I'm not sure why. But when it says estimated payments, it means that the state probably made the 95% um, of the dollar payment. There's probably some more paperwork that needs to be finalized and then needs to go through an audit. So there's really three projects out there that we're gonna have to look into and see where we stand. But we're doing pretty well. I mean, you know, out of 13 projects original, originally, 11 are gone, it looks like, or at least in progress. Um, two are open, not sure what happened with those, and Smalley, we're finding out, still needs to be closed. And the, the money, the, the dollar amount next to it is money, checks that have been cut from the state and gone to the city. Yes, and you, you're going to see that. So an audit in progress, usually there's this dollar amounts that's still sitting here. So if, if you all recall when I try to educate in this, Usually what happens in construction projects, there's always a 5% holdback. So if a, a, let's call it a $10 million project, let's say it's 80% reimbursement, and if everything's eligible, the state always holds back 5%. Then when they go through the audit paperwork, then they cut you the, the differential of 5%. Sometimes it's less because they find out things are ineligible, or they find out things that they thought were ineligible are not eligible. So there's probably some extra dollars coming forward, but we're not sure what. And they go right to the city. Thanks, and can you talk just one minute too while you're standing yeah. um, about uh, the transportation update a little bit? Oh uh, yes, I'm sorry, I don't have a problem. Oh, I do. Would you have me speak to it? I can speak. Yeah, I don't. Okay, have yeah. Um, I'm flipping about, but I just think it's important. Um, we are still, we still have a shortage on drivers, so we do. But I have to say, uh, both of our vendors, both for student and specialty. Are, are able to maintain the coverage of all scheduled routes. Um, it's with people working late, working double time, so, and, and that's important to know, uh, just for future conversations that we're gonna have in, in finance, uh, hopefully next month. Um, you know, a lot of it is, uh, you know, people are stealing from one district to the next. People are pretty desperate these days across the state. Um, you know, you saw in the current, maybe two weeks ago, one out of four teachers is resigning from the Harper Public Schools. You know, it's 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 a it's a real issue across state. So um, I'm really grateful for both of the transportation companies. They're working really hard. Um, yeah. So that's it. Um, and and again, there's more there. You can read up on it. Thanks, Kevin, very much. And I wanted Mary Ellen just to speak briefly about Saturday. It was the first time uh, effort that we've ever had a, a, a recruitment fair. So if you could just speak to that. So while the cameras were being installed, Mary Ellen was there with her team. Right. It was a busy day on Saturday. So we had our first in-person recruitment fair since before the pandemic. Uh, its design was uh, with a pre-registration format with a bit of a speed dating twist, if you will, where there were many interviews that happened on site. We're happy to report that there were uh, 32 people that came through the door um, in the three-hour event. Uh, 27 are going to move forward as possible hires. Four certified staff, 16 paras. Uh, two teaching assistants, four BSAs, and one LPN. So we're, we're going to replicate that format as well in the spring uh, for a larger audience for our spring recruitment. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then, Mike, if you're good, I'm going to talk a little bit about the culture and climate because that's sometimes when we get feedback from families, it's what I'm hearing from some of you and talking about culture and climate, especially at our secondary school. Mike, did you want to talk about it a little bit? Sure. But I promise the rest of you can read on your own. I mean, we're part of the I'm just curious. So I, I don't think it's any secret that we, like everybody else, have faced challenges um, with uh, re-entering uh, fully, especially uh, at our largest schools, the two large middles in the high school. Um, I, I, there's a brief summary in the superintendent's report. Kind of tier one has been all the schools instituting structures to, to uh, supervise students more closely in the hallways or monitor students more closely in the hallways as that became an issue. The middle schools have tightened up at times and then sought to, to kind of scale back after providing some instruction with students about expectations in schools, remembering that 
really two thirds of the students in each middle school are new to that school given the fact that the closure, so the seventh graders and sixth graders are all new to both the middle school structure and a school that large. Uh, ad additionally, st students uh, who are kind of tier two have been uh, identified through that process of tightening up in the halls to be in need of, of more uh, support, have been identified. We've been working with the administrative team, the pupil services department to support those students and, and, and to be totally transparent, there's a handful of students at each school who continue to struggle despite intervention and we're meeting um, to, to, to look individually at those students and, and determine uh, what more supports they can have, we can provide for them either within the building or in some cases looking for um, ways to educate them in, in settings that are more appropriate for their needs. Thanks, Mike. And there is a page in there, um, and I, I won't go into it too much, but we're on our third cycle. It's called our Community Engagement Team, um, which has been a, a real success, right, community? It's something that we put together to make sure that we had all represented community, community agencies at the table when social workers are bringing a case of concern. Um, and it's, it's held right here in this boardroom. We have um, Mal from next door, we've got HRA, we've got all the necessary people at the table to support a family and a student who are struggling. And so it, it runs very, you'll see the procedure, we put it there. We do it every two weeks. We're able to hear two cases per, per session. Uh, so we've had six successful um, uh, interventions, helping family connect right with housing if they need that, or whatever the services that they need, that that's, that's what we're doing. Um, so that's one, you know, we're really proud of, and I have to thank Joe Vavracek and Jay Miramont because they're the ones that have spearheaded this. Um, you know, there's, there's a real need, um, you know, COVID or not COVID, so we're addressing that. Um, you can see also in your packet that we are in now in the second session of Elevate, which is our after school, out of school time programming. Um, and our numbers actually from the first session at 150 at the elementary have gone up to close to 500 or 450. So we've tripled. And again, slower and steadier, pro a slow, slower progress at the middle, but, but not too, well, 612, not too bad to have close to 200 kids uh, in grades 6 through 12 that are coming out either after school or on Saturdays. So we're, we're pleased with those numbers. We've worked really hard at, you know, I, I can't thank the staff enough. They are incredibly hardworking people, and they, they just deserve some time to be told how good they are, right? And, and I think um, <coughs> we try to say it. I would appreciate any of you just, just, just communicating to them um, their efforts because it's, it's tough work right now. But we're getting there. We're getting there slow and surely. So any other questions? If you read this at home, you want to shoot me an email? Shoot me an email. But um, probably <coughs> more than you need it. Um, I did have just one quick question, if sure. I could. Um, I know that when Mr. Foreman was just speaking to the um, the culture and the climate yep. in the schools, is what is being enforced at Slade the same thing as what's being enforced at Pulaski? Um, I'm saying, looking, comparing apples to apples, right? Because New Britain High School is its own entity, but like from right. one school to the next. From the two big middles? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to say yes with a caveat, right? Yeah. And so the resources, they may be a little different depending on, on the style of leadership. And, you know, we, we have a phrase that we used off, we use often, and it's freedom within fences, right? These are the parameters. Um, but every leader is individual, just like every classroom teacher is going to put a little bit of a different spin to it, which is okay. It, it causes good conversation when the two admins get together and compare, right? Well, what are you doing differently and what can I do? Um, so, yes, with the caveat of... You know, um, I, I will say um, definitely uh, Pulaski started, Meg, did you want to say something? Pulaski started something, Slade thought that looks good, we're going to try that too. So it's kind of a ping and, ping and pawn. Did I yeah. get that? Yeah, I mean, both are dealing with, with um, how much movement to allow students uh, as, as a core issue in their, in their, they've collaborated. You know, it, it, it's not totally in sync. Um, as, as things improve, they, they allow more movement, so, so it doesn't necessarily move by step, but, but certainly they're collaborating, and, and that's, the, the, you know, the, the way they're doing it, um, as the superintendent said, there's some slight nuance difference, but it's really around 
how, how much support students need during transitions. We found from the beginning of the year, unstructured time was not conducive to the needs of, of all these students coming back new to the school. So how to create structures during transition times. Um, they're doing similar things, but not exactly the same, and they're, they're actually co uh, collaborating around what's, what's worked so that they've, they've also learned from each other as part of that process. So quick question, right now, are they all, moved, like all the students are moving in the hallway from one class to the next in both of the schools? Right now, right now, um, they're, they're moving from one class to the next. Generally, um, I can't say it's 100% the same, but, they're, but, but both schools have, have <coughs> movement during the day as opposed to there were times when teachers were moving Correct. at Slade. Um, that, that has been phased out at Slade. Um, Pulaski, uh, there, there was times when they were not moving as well. That has been phased out over the last uh, couple weeks as well. Okay, so right now at least they're able to get that interaction, <coughs> hey, how you doing, high five their friends and get to the next class. Well, right. the, the, in, the interaction's limited. The, they are moving. They're moving in a supervised manner. Um, so, so there are times when they're interacting, cafeteria, mm -hmm. uh, gym, but, but they are super, supervised in both as they move, but they are, they are certainly moving. They certainly can see their friends, but, but they, need to, they need to learn to get from <coughs> point A to point B um, without too much socialization. So that's part of the learning process. No, I got that. I was just concerned based on what was written on here. I was just trying to see if they were leveling off the playing field as far as, you know, the same punishment but for one school it, for the other and if they are all... Can I just say, I think it's important that it, that it, it, it wasn't presented as punishment. It was presented as, as, as structure and, and learning how to, how to live in an environment with 900 students. And I, I know both principals, you know, when they, when they found a few teachers saying, well, you guys have to get better at this so we can let you move. It's no, it's our responsibility to teach you to live in this environment that's very different than uh, the environment that two thirds of you were in last time you were all together in a school. Absolutely. Absolutely, I appreciate that. I just wanted to say something too. Uh, you know, I have grandkids in the school system and I have one at Slade who's in eighth grade and one at Newburn High School who is in 10th grade, this is her first year actually being in the high school. And I've always said this about the high school, it's like two schools in one. Because the experience that my granddaughter in 10th grade is having is different from the stuff that you're hearing on the news because she comes home every day and she has a positive attitude. And when I ask her, was there a fight today? She'll say, I don't know, I didn't see a fight. You know, because she goes to her classes if she sees large crowds gathering, she goes a different way, and she's having a great experience. And when we had to shut the school down for a day, she was in tears about not being able to go to school. And the one that slayed the other day was sick, and I had to take her to the doctor. She wanted to go back to school, even though the doctor said, you don't have to, I can write you a note. She goes, no, I want to be back. I want to take her to lunch. She didn't want lunch because she wanted to be back at school. So you can still get a good education in New Britain, mm -hmm. and I think we as parents have to set the example for our kids. They don't have to react to all that crap that's going on out there. Mm -hmm. They need to go and learn, and that's why I tell my grandkids, they said, Grandma, why are you always telling us what not to do? We act like we don't know how to act. <laughs> and she said, just because we act one way at home, we don't do that. You know, we've learned we're not stupid. So, if, you know, the parents, we've got to take some responsibility, too. The school cannot do it all. If you want them to teach your children, that's what the teachers are there for. They're not there to take care of all the stuff you're not dealing with at home. Mm -hmm. So. No, it's true. Well, I challenge my kids every day to tell me something good about school, yeah. and that's um, actually what their allowance is based on. Don't tell anybody, but that's what I do. Mm -hmm. um, and so they actually have to come back with a good report from school. You know, tell me something that you learned at school today. And we just keep it engaging around our dinner table. And it has, I, I started it just kind of as like a ha-ha years ago with my kids. 
um, and it's turned into something that is just wonderful because I have three all at once at Slate. Mm -hmm. And so they all always have different perspectives, but they have always had something positive to say. So I can't, well, small, small exception, but either way, they've always had something positive to pay because I challenge them to be invested in what they're doing and they're learning. So, see, and I tried offering the lunch too, and I got the no, let me just go back to school too. <laughs> okay, so let's, yes, Nick. Uh, just to touch on what Ms. Parker said, I, I think it's important to also remember, and this has come up time and time again, how we are portrayed in the media is so much different than the reality of what's actually going on in our schools on a day-to-day -day basis. And, you know, the media is going to portray what sells, mm -hmm. and social media is going to portray what gets clicks and what gets likes and what gets interaction. Right, so a lot of what we see out there is very negative. There's a lot of positive. Doesn't mean it's all great. Doesn't mean there aren't things to work on, but. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything more in your committee report? Are your, I'm all set. Okay, committee reports. Um, finance? Finance, you will see a lot on the consent agenda, but I always like to call out um, donations. So we have a donation for $1,400 um, for the Newport Transitional Center. They do it in their store as like an incentive. <coughs> That's from um, Jim and Lisa Dufour. And then, oh, do I have the number right? But it was don donors choose from Lego spikes in $1,065. Mm -hmm. You'll see a lot on consent this. We did a lot of work in um, committee last week. Last week, two weeks ago. Okay. Um, <laughs> policy? Uh, there are a number of things from policy, uh, speaking of cleaning up things and all of that. So there's a couple that we're going to strike, um, mostly just combining and cleaning up existing policy. There is one that the superintendent that we had reviewed, very minor changes to it, but the superintendents requested that we send it back to policy because they were having uh, our attorneys look at the admin regs for it and want to make sure that stuff that should be in the regs aren't ending up in policy and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So that's going to go back for another pass through committee. Okay, and curriculum? Curriculum did not meet. They have a lot of updates um, and reports coming up for the new board curriculum. And personnel? And we had uh, some new position requests that we went over and some revised of job, revision of job descriptions. And so and quite the items on the uh, consent agenda for this week. Okay. <clears throat> and are there any board reports? Mine is yep. just quick. Um, yep. So I know for... I think boys soccer is playing in the state tournament tomorrow, or is it today? It's today. Today's volleyball. Today's volleyball, and I did already hear that they did make the first. They made it to the first round, but they did lose, unfortunately. Um, football, their and band. It's their senior night, mm -hmm. Friday night, and homecoming. And then um, I did take part in the um, diversity, equity, and inclusion on the fourth. Really looking forward to what's next because it was a great conversation on how to engage parents, but not quite sure we got to that what's next, and I'm looking forward to that part of it. Um, I wasn't able to attend, unfortunately, um, due to other child, uh, other child having uh, something at the same time. But my daughter uh, in the Great High Marching Band just did an exhibition at the Women's Band Championships on Wednesday. It was rescheduled from the rain out on. Uh, Saturday, but there were 38 bands from around New England um, competing, and New Britain didn't compete, but they were, since they were the, the host of veterans, they did the exhibition um, first thing on, on Wednesday to kick off the, uh, the event. Um, it was a pr pretty big deal, and they, I, I hear they got a good reception and uh, played very well, and, um, you know, they're different style than everybody else, so mm -hmm. I think people get a kick out of seeing, you know, what they do and, and uh, how they're different. So I just want to give a shout out to the band. Appreciate their difference. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Can I just give a, a shout out to Slade? I'm sorry, I know Mike, three of mine go there, but they have been doing a phenomenal job with communicating with us as parents. Um, Verdi's been messaging all parents, really. Maybe he's just putting it on blast every two days 
giving us an update really just how they're doing just you know like hey this is we've got less kids that are causing interruptions but if you have any questions and here you go this is what we're going on and just really celebrating some of the little things which is important yeah. um and i think sometimes when you just get down to the fuck i just want to be able to celebrate something all the time so i just want to send a shout out to you know to Maisie and his team and i'm sorry to verdi Maisie and his team and, and just being able to oh my god say thank you a thousand and one times number one number two is I too was on that phone call for uh, the community conversation yep. and identified just some areas that we could do better next time, but don't worry about it, I put them on there, my comments. But I just wanted to say thank you for that because uh, it's not often where you say, hey, let's just tackle this um, among the Hispanic community, which is kind of funny because we were discussing everything and only two people were sign like Spanish speaking for themselves or saying what they were saying, but mm -hmm. no, Wold is always, she's really good about that, mm -hmm. where she'll say something and then say it in Spanish for the people mm -hmm. in the room that don't understand her. Um, and that was wonderful. So I was looking for ways that we could get to a next step. Um, and one thing that I have had, I've said from the beginning was Orlando Ruiz um, at Lincoln, mm -hmm. who does a phenomenal job connecting with our Hispanic community and our Hispanic youth. Um, if there's any way that we can put him together with a Wilda, be able to have some sort of a program for parents, bridge that with, I'm just saying this is my own two cents, when you're looking at the strengths and the weaknesses, how can we actually challenge ourselves as parents let's put a program together almost like a plti or a parent c for parents and be a, a parent leadership training institute okay. parents seeking yep. excellence in education yeah um something that's going to give you a couple different modules not just you know maybe we can get together and eat ethnic food i don't know mm -hmm. but something that is going to bring us to that next steps as a community as we're in person mm -hmm. as we're you know just getting together and sharing so i thought that was a wonderful wonderful opportunity to get Thank the conversation going. I will give all the compliments back to, to the to staff. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Slade. Joe? I just wanted to provide an update with um, the Wellness Committee. We met a few weeks ago. We're meeting again next week. Um, since the halal menu came about, we received 291 requests um, from parents to receive halal food. Um, and that actually is going to start this week. Um, so, Jeff. Um, and Wisdoms has been doing a really excellent job um, in meeting those requests. Uh, a few more updates. Um, based off the school meal survey that we had last year, um, we began providing uh, different types of food for school meals. Um, Wisdoms is now serving boar's head salads. Uh, we are offered pinto beans, um, Jamaican beef patties that were made right um, in Hartford, as well as plantains in the school meals. Um, and I do want to recognize that Whitson's is facing a lot of supply chain issues, um, so they're working really hard to make sure our kids are well fed um, with very limited options that's available out there. Um, hopefully that will improve in the next few months, um, but uh, they're definitely working hard over there. Uh, just one, a couple other board reports. Um, I just want to recognize everyone that attended Lights On After School. Um, I know it was in the superintendent's um, report, but that was a really great event with over 300 children um, that came out to Walnut Hill Park. Um, all of the providers were there, and um, the kids had a great, great day. Um, and recognizing what after school programs really mean is important. Um, just as a provider, I know that a lot of the children that attend after school um, is one of the reasons they go to school in the first place. Um, I've had lots of families and children say, like, they go to school so they can stay after school. Um, I don't want that to be the most big factor for them to go to school, but if it gets them there, then um, that's all the better. Um, and then one more shout out to Gaffney Elementary School for their strides in attendance. Um, in the month of October, uh, the class with best attendance was able to dress Miss Fazio up as a mummy as well as Tiggy the Tiger. Um, and I only know this because I'm really good friends with Tiggy, so. <laughs> That's awesome. I just want to say for the, the school lunches, <laughs> my granddaughter loves food. And she came home the other day, when she texted me from school, she goes, Grandma, they had barbecue chicken and cornbread, and that cornbread was moist. <laughs> so you can tell that. And their chicken Alfredo, she only likes it from Chili's, but somehow or another they did something at, with it at the high school that she really loved. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to say that 
Speaking of Mr. Ruiz, Mr. Ruiz, Miss Polly had a trunk or treat at uh, Lincoln that was fantastic. It was a really good event, well attended, nice, straightforward, done outside, lots of fun. Um, I also had the great pleasure of sending my son to his very first middle school dance at Hal's. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Which made me feel old, but <laughs> he had he had a fantastic time. Um, and the kids, like the kids as they were coming out, just being able to be back in the schools again and doing some of those functions and having those opportunities, you know, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. My nephew also came back from that house dance with good reports. He was sleeping over that night while he was in it, so <laughs> Lots of I, I got to hear all about it, yeah. Um, one more band shout out. The, the K-Nets were able to perform in a music video with a French um, oh, yes. uh, social media star, basically. <laughs> um, so that was pretty cool because they'll be, they'll be uh, posted all around the world. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Sure. Yeah, I know it's pretty cool. We better buy pink drumsticks for all of our players. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, any other board reports? Let's move on to the consent agenda. Does uh, anybody want to remove anything from the consent agenda? <laughs> Why do you always look at me? <laughs> 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 yeah, I know. Well, the majority of it's mine. <laughs> okay. Going once, going twice. All right. Consent agenda is passed. Let's move to new business. Oh, so I make a motion to approve the uh, 250 John Downey Drive. Is that one? Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, make a motion to approve the 250 Don John Downey Drive lease. Second. I see him coming to the podium, so I know he's going to... Because I know we talked about it in committee, and I think people want to kind of hear what the plan is for, for this space. So as, as I came to the board the last month, the month before, we spoke about the need for space in the district. Um, there are two properties we're looking at. One of those is 140 Production. This is 250. This is regarding space within the district. Currently, our buildings are maxed out. Um, when you look around even in this building, you look what's in our basement, you look around what keeps coming in through the doors, we do have storage over at Smalley, well, with COVID we're definitely tasked with making sure that we have enough custodial and PPE, those supplies that are needed for day-to-day -day operations. But there are those items that we just cannot store all the time we, when you look at when we have containers, so there's furniture, there's curriculum where there's books and there's things that we have to keep. Uh, there's summer programs where we, need, we only use them during the summer school. But we have to keep them dry, we have to keep them safe, we have to keep them uh, somewhere that's easily accessible so we know what we have in the district. When you start breaking items up around the schools, we forget how many we have and where we are. That's where I just isn't there yet. So what this property is, is both an office space as well as a warehouse. The main goal was to find an existing warehouse space. Um, if you look at the exhibit, see, um, which has the actual out drawing of the plan, exhibit A, I'm sorry. There, there are 6,000 square feet that includes an office space, which is, in this building, we are maxed out for office space. Uh, we have hired a lot of people, and I think we experienced that over the spring and summer, all the people that we brought on board. We now have to put them here when they're in the administrative offices. Um, operationally, my department doesn't need to work out of gates. We are on the road most of the time. We are out in the field a lot of times. So for us, uh, we can move to a space like this and actually manage the inventory. So there's both short-term and long-term inventory. There's that inventory in this warehouse that we put aside and maybe look at once in a while, maybe use annually. Then there'll be inventory that keeps coming in and out as projects occur. So one of, the two, one of these locations, I think we spoke about this last time we did the presentation, was one of those 2,000 square feet. It is a separate, it is walled off, it has its own entrance. That can be used for uh, high value storage, that can be for storage items that uh, maybe a vendor's using and they need, like this weekend we had cameras that we needed to be stored. 
Um, they can be given access to that area. They can work out of there and keep the Board of Ed and our inventory separate. So it gives us two working spaces, but it gives us uh, a little under 8,000 square feet to work with for storage, which is exactly what we need at the moment. Um, so you can take a look at these, Exhibit A. Um, so ultimately, the thought is to sign this lease and move as clean up as many of the closets, the warehouse space, the basements in our schools as we can to free up for other usage so that we can get more supplies and keep more supplies on hand. Uh, or if need be, a lot of the closets that are currently being utilized that if we need them for some sort of alternative space, whether it be for learning uh, or just for office space, it can be utilized for that. There are many rooms in the, in the schools that can be used for staff for various reasons that currently aren't being used just because there's large items being stored there that don't need to be in the school. We can move them back and forth. Yes. Quick question. Do you have like an inventory system that you're planning on like instituting to say like this is all our paper, this is how much paper we have, this is all our glue sticks, this is... Ultimately, that's where I'd like to go. And I'd actually like to go with some sort of coding system. I'd love to go with an asset disposal form. I actually brought that up um, about a week and a half ago. So not only with the, uh, with the assets that come in, the inventory that comes in, but also what do we do with that inventory when it's expired, no longer usable, right. but we have to get rid of it. And if someone were to ask what happened with those tables that were bought 15 years ago, we would say on this day, and that's usually a barcoded inventory. That's something we would look at. We put a code tag specific for CSDMD. And when it comes in, it gets coded and tagged. And there's software out there that does it. And then when it gets discarded, it gets tagged as well. Ultimately, that's where I'd love to go. But right now, we just don't have that centralization. And this would offer us that path to centralization. So I really think that's an important step for us getting a grip especially with cost controls. Knowing what we have for yeah. tables, you look at the containers, the containers are the direct result of the fact that we did not have this kind of storage available to us, so we just needed to bring in containers. And though containers are nice, they're not environmentally controlled, and, and they're not really sightly when you see them around our school. So I would love to get a lot of the items in the containers out of there and put in here if we can. Just want to say, ten-year lease. We're we're last ten year with ten. Uh, two five options. The thing, because this is long term, and yeah, you really you want we want to get in there. We want to negotiate. The longer you, you negotiate a lease, the better off you can do. Um, but ultimately, we want to know where our inventory is going, and to, to be moving it around so many years. Uh, you know, every five years, it's just not feasible. So the thought process is long term. Okay. Just clarifying question on the square footage. The floor area is 8,350 square feet. The floor area of the building is 2750. So when you see that, there is another building. Actually, it's owner occupied building. Okay. So that 20 is actually the rest of the remaining, the 33%. You see our breakout. Mm -hmm. um, that is the remainder of the owner. The owner yeah. has a. So we're just using the 8,000 feet. Correct. That's what the 33%. I say, because my only concern is typical past behavior. Like the next two years, we're kind of in a decent financial situation, mm -hmm. right? Anytime we've had to cut money, where does it come from? So facilities, right? So that's my only concern of a of a of a ten year. Not that it's a, a lot of money, and I think once we actually, it will probably save us money when you know what we have for inventory. But right. So if you. If you if you think about that with a plan of true asset and inventory control, right. I really think there is savings there, and I think understanding where we are, and uh, being able to buy in bulk. So if we do even have the storage, you know, when, when you buy large or certain items, which just don't go bad, and there's certain right. times a year to buy certain uh, custodial or PPE items, yeah. and knowing that we have that ability to buy in bulk, we can negotiate better pricing other than a few cases at a time. And our schools, to be honest, do not say I'm going to give you a pallet of black bags or two pallets of black bags for the year, they just don't have the ability right now. And that's what I like to do. And the store, they can't find, they can't figure out where they left it, so they got to go order more. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Any other questions on this? Yeah. I just say, uh, as looking at the 
10 year release as well and questioning that, but I also like calculated it out at 2.4% per year, which honestly is a pretty good rate in terms of like that's right near consumer price index. That's pretty low. Um, so being able to get that. And, you know, we never know what the market is going to do. I can't see the district conceivably being able to fund and build a storage facility or the city to be able to build a right. permanent storage facility in that 10 year period. But at least they'll give us 10 years knowing that maybe four or five years from now we start thinking about what is the end goal, right? And having the options in the lease for that extension also helps because then if at the end of five, 10 years, we know that we want to pursue having our own, you know, Gail, you'll still be on the board then. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things I've learned is stability when, when dealing with uh, public sector and board of ed is you really want to know the stability. You want to know what your costs are long term. You hate to see these giant fluctuations and you have to renegotiate. So that was part of the thought process as well. We have trouble with just cut Gail's salary. Yeah, just cut my salary. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We done with this? Any further questions? All right. The motion to approve. Uh, okay. We need to vote. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Motion carries. Let's move on to item D. Make a motion to approve purchase order, bid waiver, and contract between, between Consolidated School District of New Britain and New York Security Solutions for replacement of surveillance cameras at Lincoln Elementary School in the amount of $59,300.64. Second. Okay, we have a second in motion. Kevin, you want to present? Thank you. So while we were in the past month discussing the high school, um, we had a failure of the Lincoln School camera system. We got it cool to replace the, just the server alone um, with for $30,000. And that would be to maintain the existing system, which you know we've had other issues with both the aging of the cameras uh, as well as retention rate. So this proposal is to convert Lincoln over next, and Lincoln is not on the list next. We we're going to go school by school and discuss needs. Um, size-wise, square footage base, but uh, at this time I, I would like to ask that, that Lincoln be the school where you can convert next, both because of the urgency uh, and the need there. How many cameras is this one? I'm sorry. Sorry, I was just Is this the same company? This is the same company that we, for the This is the same thing? company yeah. that's currently there. I was just going to say, is it 28 cameras? That's it? Yes, I believe it is. So it's, the, it's, it's ex uh, exchanging light for light. Uh, for some reason, they don't have a copy of the Okay. Well, it's a smaller building. Also, if anybody has any questions, um, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> really embodied voice, oh, yes. That is great, great for uh, New York Security yes, Solutions. I am the infamous contractor. <laughs> Didn't realize you called in, Greg. I knew I said it to you, I'm sure you were here. So that was for, that's for 28 cameras, correct? Yeah, so it is, it's a direct swap. So those are all existing cameras with existing cabling, uh, all, all quite old legacy cameras that are going to be replaced for a modern unit. Yeah. And these would have the storage of 30 days, so these are the newer cameras. Yes, sir. And this is for a three-year license, or same as the high school, correct? Yeah. Yep, three-year license and one-year physical uh, coverage in terms of uh, on-site service. 
And the, as far as the install, since we need the camera system over there, that, this would be fairly quickly turn around? Yes, correct. These are, we're required to have cameras, correct? Mm -hmm. school? No. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I know it's a safety issue. Yes, that's why, that's why yeah. it's safe tonight. Yeah. Okay. Any discussion of this? I just have one more question. Is that inside and outside those cameras? It's all existing. It's just like change like for like those are the existing number of cameras currently at that building. Um, as we go through, if we do find one or two what we call blind spots, spots that weren't, uh, once we're up and running, uh, we, can, we can just add those in if needed. But we haven't, we haven't had that issue. Okay. Any further questions? Okay, we have a second motion. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Abstaining. One abstention. Okay. That was Nick abstaining. And all of that's the motion carries. Let's move on to item C. Oh, approve purchase. Oh, make a motion to approve a purchase order and bid waiver for emergency lighting repairs. The amount of $126,731.96. Second. We have a second. Okay, we have a second. Diana? Go ahead. So, as this is a large number, I uh, just want to reiterate, if you looked at Lighting Services' original quote, when they do their annual inspections for us, this was written up, this is the quote. Um, in their quick summary, they said, during our recent inspection and testing of emergency light equipment, we found many defective ballast batteries and entire units inoperable. Many of these fire code requirement repairs were written up in years past as well. So this is a cumulative of a deferred maintenance item we had a power outage at Smith School uh, last week. It came to light uh, at the same time as this work, you know, the inspections were going on and the quote was being built. It really came to light that the building went dark and the emergency lights are not working. And this is this is a truly a life safety issue. This is emergency lighting, uh, exit lighting, making sure that uh, should the power go off in the building, people can exit the building safely, no trip hazards, um, and if there is a fire issue as well. So. This is our, as you can see, they have the DAS, the uh, state contract. Yes. So it's RFP, we're not going to get better than the state contract. We go off state contract. So the request is to take this amount and get all of the schools up to speed, up to code for life safety. Goes back to my past comment of where do we take money from facilities. Yep. And here we are. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. Okay, sorry. It was more comment than. <laughs> uh, just for a point of information, and I'm going to harp on this a little bit because it's my last meeting. And I've, um, Technically, this wouldn't require a bid waiver because it is a state contract and we are allowed to substitute in things that are on the state contract bid. It would be a purchase order approval because of the size of it. Um, a lot of times... I know that things get put on the agenda as bid waiver and or purchase order just to cover our bases because it is a little bit tricky to understand what the difference is. Um, you know, it's the same thing for a lot of things with professional development or consultants, which technically are something you are not obligated to bid, therefore don't need a bid waiver. But the state contract list does exist for us to be able to substitute in the place of bids especially for common uh, equipment and other things. So even though it says it on our agenda, technically this really only needs to be a purchase order approval. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Harp, harp, harp. Harp? <laughs> I'll get off my soapbox You now. text me next next meeting when it's on there and say, <laughs> I'll give you a list. Yeah, the list <laughs> of the agenda. Okay. okay. Thank you for that. Any further comments, questions? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Tina? Any abstentions? Okay. Move on to the next item. Okay, item D. Item D, the policy committee moves to approve revised policy 6162.3, citywide group testing program which I believe is 
also actually being renamed in the new policy to district-wide student assessment policy. Second. Okay. Is there a discussion on this item? Uh, just really generally, the purpose of this is um, this policy, as you can see, originally dates from well before No Child Left Behind um, and before mandatory state testing was a thing. So that is, that is why this policy probably originally existed. Um, the policy committee in reviewing it thought that it would be good to articulate the reasons that we feel testing is appropriate and doing sort of district-wide testing is appropriate and what it should be used for um, and just outlining it in there. It's, it's very similar to the old policy. It's just cleaning it up slightly and we just wanted to leave it on the books in case in some weird alternative universe in the future state <laughs> testing magically went away which I don't see happening but but you know it'd be nice to have something in there that would give us some guidance in that eventuality okay any further discussion on this item all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed any extensions? The motion carries. Policy committee moves to strike bo uh, board policy 4118.231, 4218.231, staff smoking, drinking, and drug use on school premises. Second. Okay. I will explain, we are not actually making it, <laughs> no, we're not making it so that people can smoke, drink, and do drugs on school premises. Is, this is actually, what we noticed is there was redundancy between this policy um, and another one. They actually even had the same number. My guess is in when we tried to consolidate and narrow down policies, that this was just something that there were two previous policies for whatever reason. Um, so we looked through with Shipman and Goodwin. They looked at the two of them. They sort of kept what, you know, is the most important pieces, what we are legislatively required, and they recommended striking this one and moving all the relevant information into one policy, which is our next item of business. Okay. Any discussion <coughs> on this item? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, uh, for the policy committee moves to approve revised policy 4118.231 and 4218.231, drug-free workplace. Second. Uh, there's a red line version of this, but it is heavily red lined and blue lined with things that have been moved around. Uh, for those of looking at the PDF, the blue is new language, the green is relocated language, and the red is struck through language. Um, there is a clean version afterwards that may be the best thing to uh, look at. And that starts on page 243 of the board packet. Um, but this up, this included several updates, including the fact that uh, the legalization of marijuana, the uh, prevalence of e-cigarettes and electronic nicotine delivery systems, vaping, etc., um, and all of that. So it was working to just bring it up to code with a lot of the newer state legislation and expectations. Just to piggyback off, like cannabis is legal. Maybe we need to make like some announcement during sporting events that maybe it is legal, but it's still not legal in the not stands because it's still smoking. Mm. <laughs> 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 yep. Yes, downwind. No, no, it comes downwind. I'm on the field. I'm, like, <laughs> mm -hmm. so who are you going to I'm, in, I'm in the stands. I know. I'm right there. Right I'm here. on the fence. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any further discussion on this item? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Motion carries. 
Motion to approve a re, uh, the policy committee moves to approve re, uh, revived pol revised policy six two zero zero adult education. Second. Okay. What is this? Uh, so the two changes are under, there was a change in state law that adult education is for those who are 17 years or older. Um, so that was one change that was brought to our attention. And then the other change to the policy is changing the word in the final paragraph from shall to may because there are certain things that we are required to put in our adult education program and offer. Um, ESL, adult basic education, high school completion, and uh, you know a couple other programs, the United States Citizenship Program, et cetera. But anything else that we want to offer above and beyond that is optional. The way the previous with the word shall there made it seem like we were obligated to offer more than that and unfortunately that may not always be the situation we're in so putting it as may just allows the board if they needed to make changes to the programming we offer at adult ed that we could do so any comments or questions on this my recollection would 30 or so odd years ago when i moved here that there was a catalog that came out of various, you could mm -hmm. take a bike repair class with mm -hmm. Cliff Parker mm -hmm. or uh, you know, basket Tell weaving or photography and stuff. And, and that all sort of went out the window when the cost of printing the catalogs got... No. no? There's a story behind it. But There's another story behind that. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. It had to do with personnel. So. Okay. Well, so my understanding was that there was a that those uh, classes that had a charge to them did that yes. just cover the cost of the classes, Mature, or did it actually and, and the teachers because they made whatever that thirty to fifty or thirty four okay. whatever yeah. they made that amount of money per hour. Yeah. Did it produce any sort of profit for the adult ed program no, to No, but it, it, it paid it paid for itself. Paid for itself. Basically. Okay. Cost neutral. And there were grants, you know, but yeah. for that part of it, those were it, it sustained itself. But mm -hmm. you know, if you didn't get enough students then you couldn't run the class. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. part of it had to do with when we got new administration because Dr. Over in it for years and then we got a new administrator and, and secretary and the, war, the old secretary left, and she was the one that put that thing together by herself. Uh -huh. And the other person wasn't willing to work that hard, so it went by the wayside. I say we resurrected. I think it was. I watched my parents program. take those classes. And yeah, building, right. It was just an opportunity. It was the way I, mean, to I, I do think it's school. good community building to have yeah. people yeah. have that yeah. option to go meet some people they didn't know and share mm -hmm. a common interest. And I sort of wondered, you know, I'd heard a rumor that it was about the cost of the printing, but, no, but it wasn't the cost of the printing, it was the putting it all together. Yeah, it, it required a lot of work, and the person that was the secretary was just a really hard worker and believed in it, and so mm -hmm. she right. made it happen. The other person that took her place like, didn't right. have the skill, didn't have the interest. But it strikes me that, you know, you could now do, you don't have to, call, the cost of printing and mailing, and up. that could all be... Virtual. Done virtually. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it could work. It, you know, we lost all our vendors because then they just start not doing things that need to be done, and people then. Yeah. So anyway, it's an interesting idea, um, but uh, yeah, we should change it to shall rather. Than, I mean, to may rather than shall. Um, so, any further conversation on this topic? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Policy committee moves to approve revised policy 5131.00, which is the student discipline code. Second. Okay, we have a second in motion and discussion. Uh, this had not been updated in, in a while, over uh, close to nine years, um, and is mostly just updating the language to make it more reflective of the transition the district has made towards a focus on 
you know, growing students, restore, you know, um, growing students' ability to, you know, deal with conflict, conflict resolution skills, and less on putting a moralistic bend on the language. So, like, replacing good student behavior with appropriate behavior in school, things like that, um, and just trying to make it more aligned with the district mission and vision. Just a quick comment, maybe. So the school school discipline school discipline code, right? Isn't there technically like I don't know if there's a code of ethics that go along with school, but like there's a student handbook that says these are things you cannot do, and if you violate these things, these are things that you're going to get suspended for. Mm -hmm. But we're actually removing that from the policy. That wasn't actually in the policy part of the statement. That was more in the administrative regulations and that would still be there the admiss like that wasn't if you look that's not actually student, in the policy students whose conduct violates the school district rules and regulations shall be subject to appropriate discipline by school authorities in a manner which reflects consideration of both boards comp commitment to maintaining safe and early school disrupts the educational process so you're just saying at any point if it's unable to meet the expectations required to maintain safe and positive school climate they may be subject, subject to progressive discipline, which again is more in line with what we actually do. There are certain things that um, where there are like there are other policies on school weapons, um, drug use on campus, things like that, where there are state mandated. Yep. Um, but this is more about general classroom uh, like general conduct and I guess we should take it as a step of progress that we no longer need to say that corporal punishment is uh... <laughs> <laughs> well I see we left that oh no we left that there. we left that we actually talked about possibly striking mm -hmm. that but we figured we would leave it in <laughs> just in case <laughs> corporal punishment is not allowed as part of this it's, uh, it's on the bottom of the new oh, okay sorry next page <laughs> yeah. next page that's why I'm not seeing it's that. all by itself there we did put it at the end because we felt, felt it was a no duh. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? I know this is Nick's final meeting, but I would almost motion ta um, table this for a second read. Just I second that. Okay. Yeah, just uh, postpone, technically. Postpone. Postpone for a second read. Postpone okay. for a second. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do we need to vote on postponing? Yes. Okay, uh, we have a motion to postpone this. Do we need a second on that or no? I yeah. second. You second. Okay. All in favor of postponing this to the next meeting? Aye. 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 Okay. All any opposed? Nay. 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 Two nays. Three. Okay. Three. Four, Three nays, sorry. Did you raise your hand? Yeah. You raised yes. Three nays. I'm sorry, you no. Three? It's four. Right? Yeah. Okay. Four. Let's see the nays again. Nay. <laughs> One, two, three. And Oh, Tony, were you a yeah. nay or you're not a nay? No, I just oh. put a pen with a nay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I realized I was going to do that. I was <laughs> Just don't do that at an auction. You might <laughs> <laughs> I did that once. My husband and I were bidding against each other. We okay. To so the motion to postpone carries. And uh, we are going to skip item I. A uh, motion to refer okay. item I back to committee. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, policy committee moves to approve new policy 6300 remote learning. Second. Okay, we have a second motion. Uh, this is a very short policy um, that allows the district. Um, Basically, so it allows the district to offer remote learning in a short list of reasons that have been approved by the state. Um, the policy is also worded uh, to reflect the fact that the state has been 
constantly updating and shifting the guidelines on this. So it allows the district to develop procedures to enact the policy pursuant to state guidance and to change it, to change their guidelines as that guidance changes because the state may change it from one month to the next. Um, so we know that eventually the state is planning on allowing high school students to have a remote learning option and that they're looking at other possibilities for re uh, remote learning. So this also creates sort of a placeholder holder space in our policy for when that stuff sort of starts to come out. Okay, any discussion on this item? No further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I'm just abstaining. You're abstaining, yeah. okay. Gail is abstaining. I can't form a, an opinion at this point. I um, imagine. Motion to refer items okay. K through N back to personnel committee for second. further discussion. A second. Any discussion on that? No, I think that's a good move. <laughs> uh, this was at the request of administration because just because of a kerfuffle with how we how we've typically moved things through the committee review process these didn't get committee review mm -hmm. but the administration felt they could wait till they had full a chance for the committee to review them okay all in favor of referring this back to personnel say aye aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed any abstentions motion carries okay oh uh Motion to approve retention bonus for full-time employees that work through COVID-19. Revised. Second. Okay. Kevin, you want to talk about this? Yes. Um, we talked about this in finance and personnel. It's a slight revision from the, that committee. We um, Many school districts out the country are doing things for their um, employees that worked through COVID last year. Um, this was really mirrored after, um, geez, what was it, was it Raleigh? Oh, Raleigh? No, Durham, Durham, North, yeah. North Carolina. And after, after the fact, I, I went through Durham stuff, I actually went through um, the publications and all that, and I found out really the, the $1,000 was an after-tax $1,000. Initially, we thought it was $1,000, but what, reading the publication, it was, it was important to make sure all their employees received approximately $1,000 after tax. So what I did here is it's, it equates about fourteen fifty um, per employee, and if we look at our employees in our school districts, um, if you look at their single and so forth, most of them have a with the retirement, the Social Security or Medicare, um, either MERS or TRB. Their their cost is somewhere in the twenty five percent to 37 percent range. Um, so in reality, what I'm proposing here is the 1450. The lower paid employees will be taking home a little greater amount because of course their tax implications are a lot less. And really the lower paid employees with tax implication with retirement and so forth, this is probably somewhere about 25%. I can, I can give you the numbers. Um, if you look at um, the federal tax um, guide for um, lower employees, um, they're paying about 12% for federal taxes, another 5% for state taxes, um, for the MERS contribution to six and a half percent and for Medicare is 1.45 so that comes up to 24.95 percent or 25 percent the higher paid employees um, which many of them are in TRB or not TRB they're paying a, a federal tax of somewhere in the 20 22 percent range um, Medicare is 1.45 percent TRB people are paying eight and a quarter and the state tax is five and a half percent. So that comes out to about 37 and a quarter percent. So I really backed into the number, if you can see down below, at the 1450 at 25%, the after tax payment that one employee, the lower paid employees, will receive approximately $1,087, where the higher paid employees will see probably close to 913. So if you average them out, it's $1,000. So that's where I, I thought it was fair just to make it. Um, you know, equitable, everybody gets 1450, but of course the person that pays less in taxes, he or she, the lower paid employees, will be having more in their pocket. So that's what I'm proposing. Um, you know, we're trying to reward the employees that were here for the past year plus. 
We've hired a lot of new employees this year. No, they would not be eligible for it. It's for the people that worked with us for last year. who we'll continue working for this year. And the payment will be made somewhere, um, I think in April, right before the April vacation. So it'll be a March, March. mid-March, late March, early April payment. Will help the people taking a spring break? Yes. So there was a change, and I, I found that change later on. That's what I'm recommending, you know, re revising what I gave you earlier. And this is being paid out of your spot of money? Well, it could be paid out two sets. Like um, Durham, North Carolina, it did, it did qualify for the um, ESSER two or ARP or whatever you call it. Um, we're probably going to recommend doing that. We we may have money left in our local budget. I'm not I'm not going to you know say we do not. Um, so it can be paid out either or. We'll probably try to put an ESSER. Um, we we have found out this year um, with our ESSER funds. We do have you know one of the things we find out this year. I think the superintendent will. Uh, let you know that you know we we've, we've hired a lot of people, but people are jumping ship. We we uh, from one one job to another, and we found out in the district it's just not teachers; it's a combination. Um, so we're trying to you know give our employees that are sticking out with us something. It's it's not something that you know it's just it's a gratitude. So um so we do have we do have surplus in our operating budget. I'm going through it right now. Um, so I think either or we'll try to put it in the ARP but we may pull it back to local at the end of the day. Because you have to remember too, with the ARP funding, ESSER 2 funding, if we don't use it this year, we can use it next year. Okay, any further discussion on this item? I think this is great. I mean, I think it's a conversation happening actually even in other sectors as um, employers are hiring, struggling to hire, and they're giving hiring bonuses. Um, in school districts it's happening. I know I see it starting to happen here and people who have stuck it out and been loyal are like, you know, wh where's my bonus, right, for mm -hmm. all the extra, especially the extra time that went into transitioning mm -hmm. from in-person to online um, mm -hmm. and kind of all those un unmeasured hours. Um, it's, it's almost not a bonus, but a kind of, you know, the... Uh, yeah, back pay for um, something that probably should have been acknowledged. So, yeah, I think that's major and not only as an acknowledgement, but just a, a fair thing to do, right, um, job-wise and an incentive to stick around if we've got mm -hmm. one in four people potentially leaving, mm -hmm. in, at least in districts that look like ours. Um, it's, it's a good way to incentivize people to stick around. Okay, I agree, thank you. Any further discussion on this? <coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion carries. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll motion to refer item P uh, back to personnel committee. Second. Same reasoning as before. Okay. We have a second. Any discussion on this item? All in favor of moving this back to personnel? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any extensions? Okay, motion carries. Item Q, operations, approved purchase order, bid waiver, and contract between Newport and Board of Education and Connecticut Association of Boards of Education, Inc. Cade for Strategic Communication Services, $60,000. This was revised since committee. Second. Second. Mr. Kanata is online to speak to us. Matt, do you want to speak to this? Yeah, absolutely. Good evening, everyone. This is, this is for, through Kate, who had reached out to us after everything. No, sorry, I was not So after everything else went on in the beginning of the school year and wanted to offer more resources to us to, to really just spread the positive of what's going on. It was mentioned earlier tonight that there is there is a lot of, of good happening in the school district that far outweighs what the media and social media want to report. And, and this was their way of offering you know additional resources, several people, the company, and saying, you know, partner with them and through 
other media platforms, through social media, through traditional media, through radio, work with them and we can push out the, the good that you're doing within the school district. So really this is about that. This is to really highlight everything that we're doing. And we already, um, you know, if this were to be passed, we already have a robust plan in place to, to aggressively hit the ground over the next several months to just plug the airwaves and every media platform possible with, with everything good that was going on. Okay. More discussion on this? I definitely think it's much needed this year, next year, maybe when things calm down, maybe not, but I'm all about like <coughs> tooting our own horn and, and cheering on for our positives, but two years, eh, might be a little much. I'm still kind of for it. Okay, yes? Um, it sounds like it would be a good uh, start to laying a foundation um, to doing this strategically going forward. Um, and I'll share, you know, with some of the work I do with other districts, one thing I actually noticed was a Board of Education having a communications committee, and they do meet like the other committees, um, and strategize and put out a newsletter. And so there are communications people from the district and all of the different departments reporting things that happen, and this board committee actually leads the work of um, sharing the information out to the community, and that's a very good way to make it long-term sustainable. Um, but this is cave and you know training and whatever from them. Yeah, this may be something you want to tie into. I don't know how this is set up, but um, like that. yeah, so that then it's a start but it's always looking at sustainability right like mm -hmm. you don't want to depend on consultants forever right. I've always argued against that um, in, in every way but if you don't know how to kind of start up you can use that help and then mm -hmm. the point Good is point. to build capacity and be able to do it because nobody reads the new like did Matt I have them. letters I hope Matt heard them mm -hmm. <laughs> sure he heard them Mr. I like Committee that idea. I'll let him know. Yeah. I will. I'm yeah. Like, yeah, I hope I remember that. <laughs> okay. Nick will so, remind you. Yeah. Any further discussion <laughs> yeah. on uh, this up. item? Yes. I, I just want to say, like, like we've said multiple times this evening, there's a lot that good that, of right. good that goes on here. Um, you know, there's a lot of amazing things we have. Our high school academies, our, you know, our sports, our, you know, arts. There's the amount of, you know, uh, why am I blanking on terms? AP courses we offer. Right. Right. There, there's a ton of what we have. I constantly am hearing how professional and dedicated our stage crew at the high school is when outside organizations come in. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot of great things that we've been doing as a district for a long time. And, you know, the the magnet schools and some of the other organizations, they put money into messaging and marketing mm -hmm. right. and partially out of necessity, but it also means that they get a brand out there and we've tried to do a lot more. And I think, honestly, I think uh, Matt, cannot, Matt and um, Paul. Paul have done amazing work over the last several years of creating some really good campaigns and messaging that have really started to bring that forward. Um, so I hope that if the board does approve this, that Matt and the others are working really closely with these consultants and picking up a lot of the tips and tricks and again, to what Dr. Sim said, building that sustainability. I really like that idea though. Okay, any further thoughts on this? Okay, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Oh, item R, approved purchase order bid waiver and contract between Consolidated School District of New Britain and Torsh for coaching monitoring license in the amount of $32,000. There was no committee review on this one. Okay. So sure. Um, so this is this is time sensitive. I have Chris Badenhop, our school readiness liaison, on. This is for school <coughs> readiness dollars. Chris. Good evening, everybody. 
Um, sure. So over the summer, um, the Office of Early Childhood gave an administrative grant, or excuse me, gave administrative funds. They call them supplemental admin funds. Um, to each liaison for added responsibilities over uh, the last year, similar to what you guys were just talking about. Um, and they were very specific on how you could use these funds. Um, it had to be specific for the liaison use in building up um, equitable market, or, uh, excuse me, monitoring and working around those supports or professional development for the liaison specifically. And so, in talking with the superintendent and with uh, Amy Anderson and others, one of the things that we've been wanting to do to build up quality around coaching and monitoring is this online platform uh, through Torch. And so um, the funds were difficult to come by originally, but with this, with these funds, we're looking to order um, licenses for all 40 of our school readiness classrooms with the addition of um, 10 extra slots, one for myself and nine others for different uh, consultants and coaches that are within different projects within school readiness that are all working with our 40 classrooms. And so it made sense to do this not only for this year, but because we have to use these funds within this um, fiscal year, it made sense to put um, to go down further the, the next five years so that we would have these to sustain this project as opposed to enjoying them for this year and then not having them, right? So um, these are one-time um, stipend funds that are coming at least at the moment. And so uh, we want to take advantage of these funds. Um, we've already got the dollars and so it's just how we use them. Um, and it was approved by OEC and our school readiness council. So, okay. so yeah. I understand like why we have, we have to use the funds, but what, I guess I don't understand what TORCH is, like what is it for? Sure, so it, it's got a lot of facets to it, um, but I, it, it's, it's like a host kind of platform, and so um, myself, our coaches, our consultants are using the same forms across the project. It's communication back and forth with the teachers, it has real-time um, video, uh, so if I'm taking a video of a teacher and then we're gonna review afterwards, there's in-time comments and uh, captions and things like that that we can do so you're not searching a whole video for the feedback, but you're uh, time stamping it so that they can look right at that feedback and go back and forth. Because honestly, um, you know, I'm a coach at heart, even though that's not what I get to do too often, but. One of the biggest drawbacks is that time is, is difficult to come by, especially with a staffing crisis. And so um, being able to sit and talk with teachers at the times so that they can get out of the classroom is tough. And so this allows us to give good feedback in time for videos and things like that within this capability uh, of the program uh, I got it. to have that good communication back and forth when they're able to view it, whether it's that time or later on or, or different things, it's all within this, um, within okay. the torch. Chris, I, can I just also point out too, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. our, our uh, preschools across New Britain, right? It's not just our Board of Ed preschools. So this is networking, Correct. this is all of them. It's HRA, it's YW, it's all of them. Yeah. Yeah. So that's right, and we it. also um, are enhancing through the Science Center as part of our consultants, our executive function, our um, social emotional pyramid model uh, consultants. So there's a lot of different people that are joining together in one area. So it's a resource for the teachers, too, to go to one stop yes. to find the resources and connections for all of these things. So that's what, a lot what we're paying for the licenses, too. Thank okay. you. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Any discussion on this item? No. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I'm abstaining. You're abstaining, yes. So what can OEC? I worked at this, on this project, so, um, so I was just going to say. <laughs> okay. Um, let's move on to the next. Uh, motion to refer items S and T back to the Finance Committee for review. Second. Okay. Same reasoning as before. Yep. Mm -hmm. Is um, do we have a second on that? 
Yeah. All in favor of moving those back to committee? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Item U, approved purchase order, bid waiver, contract between Mr. Raleo, of launching leaders in education and consolidated school district of New Britain, the amount of $30,000. This is the funding sources commissioner's network. Yes, second. Okay. So we have a second in motion. Any further discussion? So is this like coaching of leaders or this is this is again the next three items I just want to couch it with. We we bypassed committee because they are time sensitive. It's commissioner's dollar. By the time we get the contract from them, committee has already met, then we'd have to wait another month and a half. And one of our struggles has been historically spending down the dollars we get in the allotted time we have because of the lapse in time with contracts going over to council, being reviewed, etc. cetera. Um, and so, yes, this is a continuation, actually. This is the second year um, that this uh, firm has come in to coach, actually, Ms. Robles and her team at Pulaski. Mike, did I get that all right? Yeah, that's correct. Thank you. <laughs> Some of you might remember uh, Mr. Santiago as the uh, principal at Small in many years. Yes. Yes. Okay. Any um, discussion on this item? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item D, approved bid waiver and contract between Capital Region Education Council. Correct? and New Britain Public Schools for instructional support, $12,600. Funding source is Commissioner's Network. It's Second. That come through committee. Okay. And a little explanation on this one. Mike, my memory has failed me now. Yeah, similarly, this is a, this is a Commissioner's Network um, contract. It's a continuation of, uh, I, I believe, the, the math. Yeah, I can't remember okay. her name. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I remember her name. Oh. She's been working with the math department uh, under Commissioner's Network Grant. And um, she has been continuing this as the second year of the three years it goes um, two middle schools and smaller. And okay. Any further discussion on this? Mm -hmm. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion carries. W, approved purchase order and bid waiver for emotionally interactive student development program for Slade Middle School, 83,500 uh, school improvement grant and commissioner's network grant. Yeah. Second. Uh, you can yeah. You're up, Todd. I love, all right, so I, I we we'll break it up there. Good evening, everybody. Uh, this is a, a continuation. We uh, piloted the, the program uh, work at last year with Lori Thurio um, in regards to the uh, student development program at Slade within a number of classes. We had great uh, feedback from our students and their families regarding that, so we want to expand it this year to uh, 240 students throughout the entire year. Uh, students. Uh, we'll complete the uh, baseline assessment for personality assessments to identify types of learners they are. Staff will do the same. The reason why we have the students and the staff doing this is to continue to foster uh, stronger relationships between teachers and students. Additionally, we have uh, school counselors are trained in the assessment delivery and analysis to deliver it on a yearly basis to come just to uh, create a program of sustainability. Um, we're looking up to three, up to 300 students to participate in uh, six-week courses that will co cover the following topics of discovering personality strengths, learning and leadership styles, looking forward to career planning, understanding goals, career planning, public speaking, time management, financial literacy, etiquette skills, uh, mentors, and time uh, and uh, time management, public speaking. So. Uh, what we're looking to do is really align uh, with the POG of the district to continue to further strengthen our, our students and prepare them for their 
high school uh, high school experience and career to uh, college career readiness piece. Okay. You have any questions? I know I said a lot there. <laughs> questions? Okay, not seeing any questions. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Thank you. Okay. All right, thank you guys. Have a good evening. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, motion to add an item to the agenda. We have a purchase order bid waiver in the amount of $178,870. Um, and this is for uh, boilers at Pope John Paul. Second. Okay, we have a seconded motion. Kevin, you want to explain what this to is all add about? It to the agenda. To the, add to the agenda. Okay, sorry. Uh, so okay. we had to mess up at least once. Right. Okay, so um, all in favor of adding this item to the agenda? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Go ahead. Motion to approve the purchase order and bid waiver of uh, boilers in the amount of $178,870. Uh, $870. Second. Okay, we have a second in motion. Now, Kevin. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I just received this last week, uh, last Friday, so I apologize for how late it is. But this is a very important item. It is a large number item, but currently at Pope John Paul, there are two boiler rooms. Uh, boilers, there's three boilers for the entire school. They're all original to the building. Uh, one boiler room, which feeds half the building, has two boilers, so it has a redundancy, but there is another boiler room that only has one boiler currently in it. That boiler, uh, all three boilers are antiquated. They do need replacement. Uh, long term, we were looking to replace them and have a discussion um, past the winter, uh, but they do need constant maintenance. Boiler supply is on most supply chains currently in the world. Um, we have never seen anything like this before. I, we cannot get boilers. Right now, we have a boiler project where we replace the boilers at the schools. Yeah. Um, over the summer, we do have boilers in the schools. The boilers have singles, but the, uh, the, the redundancy, the secondary boilers for the schools, has been delayed until January uh, because of the steel and the iron. And the, basically, there's no material that people can get for these. <clears throat> there is a big risk to Chamberlain. Uh, Chamberlain, in that single boiler room, uh, it already has two plates that have issues due to um, the feed units we are making, we will get through. We've been getting through, but I can't guarantee we're gonna make it through the coldest parts of the month of the year. Um, my job is to bring risk and let people know what the risk is. And there's a very significant risk. During a normal year, I would say, we can think about it, we can, we can go a couple more months and see where we're at. We don't have that luxury. I don't wanna be alarmist, but We've been looking for a replacement boiler since the start of school. We've been looking for something to put in there should that boiler fail. And it just came last week we were able to secure a boiler. Um, Is this where um, Alderman Savage called in? Was it last meeting and talked about the boilers at Pope John Paul? Right. So the boilers, okay. were, the boilers were in lockout prior to us getting yeah. there. They yeah. were in lockout because... I don't know who worked on the boilers, but uh, it was in, it was a duct and exhaust problem. Yeah, okay. The way they had changed the duct, it was actually venting back into the boiler room. So I'm not 100% sure I wasn't there. We didn't own the building or, or lease yeah. the building at the time, but there's probably a CO issue uh, or some sort yeah. of blowback in the building where people were smelling combustion and that's what a lockout. We repaired that. Those boilers are good, but we did an inspection. And they're, these are old steam boilers. Very hard to find companies that still work in old steam and water systems. Um, most of them are air systems in the newer buildings, right? So this company was able to secure a boiler. Uh, actually, we would need to, tonight what I'm asking is that we buy the boiler, we bring the boiler, whether it be stored down in the boiler room, in the, where there's one, there's two rooms, in the single boiler room, boiler room, we'll call it, or we can store it at their facility for immediate. But it would be ready to go should in January we lose that boiler, or we lose one of the other boilers and the other one can't pick up. It is a, an insurance policy. Um, over time, it will be it will be put in, no doubt, because we are there for a couple more years. 
Uh, plus there are other uh, renovations right behind it, so it does make good sense long term, again, knowing that this building uh, will be heated properly. But this would be an insurance policy. Um, there is abatement that needs to be done, that's how all these boilers are, not only just in the room and the wraps, but also the boiler itself is an abatement issue. So when that boiler gets ripped down, it will, it will be technically an abatement. Um, there is a new boiler feed unit that needs to go in, there are new burners that will need to go in. Um, so part of this proposal, this proposal is actually for two boilers, the 178-870. There was a secondary packet uh, which had the, the project summary that you have that. That was a 27, I believe, 27 page document which goes through what the actual project is. Um, yeah, it's uh, actually 35 pages. Uh, but th that this is the proposal. So what you see is a summary sheet of cost, but the proposal here actually defines the work that will be done. And in that, if you look, it's actually for two boilers. We cannot secure two at the time, but we can secure one today. Uh, it's actually on hold right now at Smith Boiler. Um, so if we approve tonight, we can, we can purchase the boiler and get it here. Uh, long term, if we don't need the boiler, in January we make it through and the boilers are fine. Uh, next summer we will look at installing and putting both boilers in and getting that room, uh, having redundancy in that area. Should that boiler fail though, there is really, uh, currently, there is no supplemental heating that's going to heat that building. So we will lose use operation of the building. Don't we just want to do it? We don't want to just do it? It's like, why wait for it to... I, you don't want to do that in the middle of winter. You know, you don't, you don't want to risk it. The boilers have been there since the start, since the building in the 60s. Um, they're working. You know, you don't fix what's not broken. <laughs> but you do plan later on to fix. Uh, what is that called? Borrow and trouble or whatever that is? Yeah, I know. I'd love to have done it. But uh, we will do it. We will do it next summer. And we will. That's what this proposal for. So though you see the 178 is for two boilers. Boiler feed unit and the burners will be put in so when this is approved um, to the existing boiler we can put the burner on and to the existing boiler we can change the boiler feed unit we can also put what's a heat what's called a heat timer on there um, and what that does is that makes sure that the outside basically make sure for the outside air it has a thermometer a thermostat on the outside and it makes sure that when the outside air hits a certain point that the, the boiler will turn on so we don't deal with cold buildings and cracked plates and it's a very rudimentary system, but it's a system that doesn't currently exist, and we won't be walking into uh, cold buildings in the morning. If that boiler needs to come on earlier to moderate the temperature in the building, it will, based on the outside air. If the outside air turns nicer during the day, then it will shut itself off. So all those components are part of this project. So they will be put into the existing boiler, and then if that, should that existing boiler with its plates crack or fail, we'll have another one to put in. So we'll do piecemeal work as much as we can. Um, be ready to go. Any so, questions on the project? Uh, yes. So the, the, the work needs to be done when the building is empty, right? So even if it's an emergency, will we have to call up school to do it, or do you do it over a week? Correct. So for an abatement, no one under the age of 18 can be in the building at the time. So, right, if we came to that. And that's why none of this work would be done uh, putting the burners on is not an abatement. Putting in the heat timer or the boiler feed, but those aren't abatement issues. Mm -hmm. It's actually when the boiler gets brought down, the insulation that's on the boiler is, is hot. It's asbestos. So that would need to be really shut down. Not have anybody in the age of 18 in the building. That's why it's a summer planned project normally, but you never know. Um, and in the cold days of January, when that's calling, that boiler is working you know, 80% of the day. It's best to have this on hand, and at the very most, you would lose a couple days of school if you had to do an emergency abatement with an emergency install. Versus, you're in the middle of January and you can't even find a boiler at all anywhere else in the country. And trust me, we are we we he has connections and he has asked everywhere uh, around the country, and he's the last he's the last boilers he can get. It's really it's not good. Out there. Okay. Any questions, discussion? All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Well, next. I just need more information. Uh -huh. You can ask for the information. No, I'm, I'm asking an email. That's, that's good. So, 
I got it. No, but, fine. Go ahead. In all honesty, the time to ask the questions yes, are pre-vote, because once it's voted on, it's voted on. Yeah. I got you. Okay. Okay. Motion carries. And we have a couple of items for or an item for information sharing. Uh, that's just so we recently passed a updated policy on the exemptions for in, from instruction for school activities um, and along with that the administration had gone through and updated the administrative procedure for that policy I think it's worth the board looking over again it really I think did a good job of addressing both the legitimate concerns that many you know that some of our families have about wanting you know wanting to have uh, you know some say in some of the things that are you know taught and that they learn in school but it also put it so that it actually becomes a conversation between the school district and the parents so I, I think the way the pop the form was put together just accomplishes what the policy we passed envisioned okay. and um, anybody have any other items as allowed by law I actually, um, I should have asked during the superintendent before, but I forgot. Um, when is the screen and stay policy going to be discussed? Um, so, I'm glad you asked that. So tomorrow morning I have a DPH call at 8 o'clock. Me, Jackie, Mary Ellen, Mike, we all sit on the call every the only uh, guidance we've gotten so far is from the press release. That's it. <laughs> so, you know, and I know I know a couple of districts have acted on the press release, and I'm like, eh, I've seen things change from a press release to practice in a day. So tomorrow morning we should have information. Our hope last week when we first heard about it was to pull in our, our, our arts teachers, our music, our PE teachers for this Wednesday and start talking to them a little bit about it. It's, it's pretty um, restricted, right, on who gets to, um, uh, I'm going to forever say Screen and stay. Yeah, we're calling yeah. them scream and stay at this point. <laughs> <laughs> um, because it's just one more change. But um, I'll know more tomorrow morning, and then I'll let you know. Okay. Okay, I, we're anticipating that's what they're going to talk about in the morning. I agree to press release. Yeah, well, <laughs> from press release Good to policy. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Making, losing press? I this know. All right. I'll well, leave it to Nick or Violet to. Uh, motion to adjourn. Uh, okay. Second. <laughs> <All right. laughs>